At North High School's Acuity Fieldhouse, where tonight the Raiders host Bayport in a WIA tournament regional final. Alongside the coach Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin. Uh, Chris, after our little interview, we've got an interview with Tom Desatel, so our fans are going to want to stay tuned for that. But uh, let's talk a little bit about tonight's game. Uh, Bayport comes in with a 14 and 9 record, uh, not very good compared to Norris 19 and 4, but they're a force. Yeah, they are, and a couple things you look at with their schedule, they split with Ashwaubenon just right before the end of the season. They beat Pulaski, that was without Peyton Armstrong, who's injured tonight. They also played a Seymour team, that's one of the best Division II teams. They just beat Plymouth the other night. They also played Arrowhead, close to East. So their non-conference teams, are, and some of the losses they have are from some very good basketball teams. So don't just, what you're saying is don't discount the record. They're a tough ball club. I, well, I don't think it's the Mayport of old. I, I was really disappointed the last time I saw them. And, you know, I, I wasn't in, as impressed and things like that. And I thought Sheboygan North was a better basketball team, but they have played some good teams. The fact that they beat that Swabinon and Pulaski late in the year kind of scares me. Now, Bayport comes in with a really good player, Steven Minzlaff. He's averaging over 18 points a game. What does North have to do to slow him down? Because uh, he's an inside and an outside guy. Yeah, and he's big, too. He's tall, so it's going to be... league and I thought they did a real good job. Another thing that kind of scared me, Marty, was looking at the scoring for Bayport. Their top five guys are all pretty close together. You know, it's not a big gap, you know, between some of their scores. So, you know, if somebody gets in foul trouble or somebody gets hurt like a Peyton Armstrong, they got other guys that can step up and that scares me too. I looked at the sheet from uh, the last time they played over here at North, and they had five, I think it was four different guys in double figures. One of them was a kid off the bench, so they can be tough. Yeah, they can, and uh, North just had the game basically won last time, and then all of a sudden at the end, they got outscored 20 to eight, and actually a th two chances for Bayport to win it. They, they missed like a 12-footer, and then they had a little banker off that just barely missed two, and North could have lost that basketball game, which they pretty much dominated. I was thinking back to that night, and I think you were always commenting, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. They got the game. Well, I was worried the whole fourth quarter, but uh, they did manage to hang on and win. Uh, both teams has a player out, uh, Peyton Armstrong for uh, Bayport. Of course, uh, Joe Hamister has been out for a long time for North, but uh, North certainly has been able to overcome the loss of uh, Hamister. Yeah, they have, and they, you know, a lot of guys have had to step up this year, and again, credit to Coach Tom Desitalo. Every year you say, oh, I don't know about this team, but he's really put together a nice squad. And, you know, you get guys out there who can just build their roles. And, you know, it's going to be Noah Stengel or uh, Lucas Hayes or, you know, whoever it is that's coming into the game. They, they seem to do a nice job. I was just thinking how well the band was right on cue and you started talking. What does Bayport bring to the table, Chris, that North has to be aware of other than Minzloff and those, uh, and that kid off the bench? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried, like I said, about balance scoring. I want to see North turn Bayport over, and, you know, something that North's going to have to do. Late in the game the other day on uh, Friday night, they turned over South, and Bayport seems to take care of the ball a little bit better than that. Now, without being Armstrong out there, maybe that's a big advantage for North, but I'd like to see North to get off to a really good start tonight. All right, that's going to be real important. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have an interview with Tom Desatel, and then after that, we'll have the starting lineups and a tip-off for tonight's game. If I ride, I will know the way the trees smell after the rain. I will grow a heart so strong that hospitals will take Tuesdays off. If I ride, road rage will turn into laughter and oil tankers will haul chocolate milk. And I won't be a boy or a girl. I will just be a rider. Foster care, just being there makes all the difference.
want to help? Make it easy on everyone. Send cash, the most effective form of disaster relief. CIDI.org. Every day, thousands of people suffer from sudden cardiac arrest. Would you know how to help? Or would they be all alone? Learn what to do at heartrescuenow.com. Joining me is Coach Tom Desatel. Tom, uh, the last time we spoke a few weeks ago, we talked mostly about you. Let's talk about the team this time. Uh, I saw you play early in the year, and I thought, boy, this is going to be a long year. It certainly hasn't turned out to be that way. Why is that? Well, we had a couple of surprises. Um, a surprise to some of the people might have been Davis Larson, our ninth grader, but he's been hanging around the gym for a couple of years, uh, just poking his nose in because his brother um, tried to play some basketball as well. And then Dominic Mann, who hadn't played basketball for a year, came out, and he's a first baseman on Chris Wright's baseball team and a good football player. And um, that kid's uh, the leading field goal percentage shooter in the league. He makes his one-footers, but which is something that they can't overextend on our shooters. Now, those are just two of a, of, of a couple of the kids that have helped us out. One of the things that I think uh, Ethan Gusky does, he provides great leadership. Are there any other players on the team that provide leadership to help uh, in terms of the team? Do you know the seniors are leaders on any team? Uh, Mike and uh, Dan Campion is our, is our point guard, certainly. And uh, he wasn't as good of a leader on Saturday, but he didn't give up, on the other hand, either. And uh, we kind of had to just talk him out of the fact that they couldn't figure out what was going on wrong, and uh, they shook it off. Let's talk a little bit about tonight's game against Bayport. Uh, you beat Bayport the first time around 62-61, but they ran off 20 points in the fourth quarter to your eight. What do you need to do to win tonight? Well, if you remember, we had a breakaway layup with Joe Hemeister, and he blew out his ACL on that play. That would have put it a 15-point lead for us, and I think the game would have been over. And our kids were worried because they knew Joe's injury was serious, too. But give credit to Bayport. Bayport's the division champion on the other side here. Uh, they've beaten uh, Pulaski. Uh, they've beaten Ashwabanen, and we know how tough those teams are. So uh, they're certainly a formidable opponent. Both teams tonight have two key players out. Peyton Armstrong, uh, one of their, their point guards for, for uh, Bayport's out. He played a lot last year, and he was hurt for our tournament game last year. And, of course, Joe Hemeister, anytime you lose your third leading scorer on the year, that's going to affect our team. Last question, Coach. Uh, Bayport's got a scorer on their team. I don't remember his name. He's averaging about uh, 18 points a game. Who's going to guard him? What are you going to do to slow him down? Well, we, uh, Stephen Minslap's his name. He's the fourth leading scorer in conference right now. Uh, he's their post player, but he'll bring the ball up in absence of a point guard. And um, Davis Larson will guard him at the beginning of the game, and we'll bring Noah Stengel in to guard him later on as well. And uh, hope to survive that way. He took over the game against Manitowoc on Saturday night. I referred to our game on Saturday. It was Friday night, of course, and uh, he took over the game that we saw against Manitowoc uh, with some big basket. He shoots the threes. He takes it to the rim. He's a good rebounder as well. Uh, Bayport's a very, very good team. All right, Coach, thank you very much, and good luck tonight. Well, thank you. He serves his party best who serves the country best. Rutherford B. Hayes. Patriotism is easy to understand in America. It means looking out for yourself by looking out for your country. Calvin Coolidge. Government is the people's business, and every man, woman, and child becomes a shareholder with the first penny of tax paid. Ronald Reagan. There is nothing wrong in America that can't be fixed of what is right in America. William Clinton. Be the we now. Are you connected? If you don't have access to internet, you aren't going to be able to take advantage of anything. The Internet is essential to the basics in life, housing, health care, employment. I personally benefited from broadband because I was able to fill out different applications, and I'm pretty positive that I'll get another job. To get connected, call 866-765-9118 or visit changeyourtomorrow.org. If everyone had access to the Internet, people's lives would be changed. Connect today. Change your tomorrow. The curfew you have imposed on me is an egregious infringement upon my social well-being and freedom. Speaking of freedom, 
It is preposterous to suggest that I have my homework done before playing video games. I know my rights, and you can't tell me what to do. Mom, Dad, you have 30 seconds for a response. Does every conversation with your teen turn into a debate? Call the Boys Town National Hotline at 800-448-3000 or visit parenting.org. Trained counselors are on call 24-7 to help with parenting problems. My diabetes tests me every day. It tests my parents, my friends, my gymnastics practice. But JDRF has my back. They're working hard to find a cure for type 1 diabetes, which for me would mean freedom. And they help me now with better treatments and new devices that make my life easier. The folks at JDRF test themselves every day. So someday, I won't have to. JDRF, improving lives, curing type 1 diabetes. What's your name? You live around here? You're pretty. Where are you guys going? Where are you going? Where are you going? I guess it's about time to get you fixed, sweetie. Your pets will start getting noticed sooner than you think. Accidental litters lead to millions killed in shelters each year. Help prevent more. Fix at month four. Back at North High School's Acuity Field Hall, so let's take a listen to uh, Bill Horsch. Here's your starting lineups. First for the Pirates from Bayport. A 6'4 senior, number one, Stephen Minzlaff. A 6'1 senior, number two, Ryan Kugelstad. A 6'1 senior, number three, Ryan Frieder. A 6'2 junior, number four, Tyler Sagal. And a 6'0 senior, number 25, Ryan Grave. And now the starting lineup for the Sheboygan North High. Ethan Gusky, guard, senior. Dan Campion, guard, senior. Davis Larson, forward, freshman. Kevin Lang, guard, senior. Dominic Mann, I'm a senior and a forward. We're rounding out the uh, starting lineup for North. Saw it on your screen beforehand. Our officials tonight are Lee Cornus from Green Bay, Todd Mangan from Whitelaw, and Jason Mangan from Kimberly. That's compliments of uh, Jim Larish, who is soon to be retired. And uh, all three uh, working the boys' state tournament uh, in Madison this year. So. Uh, Got some good ones here again, Chris, and as you, what usually happens as you get into tournament play. Well, I know the guy doing the tossing and stuff like that. He's uh, he's kind of, uh, he's done state finals. I know that for sure. Sorry about that, Marty. Hey, that's all right. We'll blame it on Richard. <laughs> he set us up tonight. What? What? All right, Larson and uh, Minsloff. On had it ripped away. Kugelstead uh, got it. Minzloff is on top. Larson is guarding him. He was the matchup we were most concerned with. Good help defense by uh, Gusky underneath. Three seconds, five seconds. Sagal was in there forever. Well, it was great defense by North. A lot of help by uh, several different players to uh, prevent the shot attempt by uh, Bayport. North comes in with a 19 and 4 record. Minzloff on uh, Gusky. Gusky from in the lane couldn't get it. Grabbing the rebound that time was uh, Ryan Frieder. Ethan Gusky, 40 points the other day, most points by a North player. Minzloff gets away from uh, Larson for an easy two. North player ever in a tournament game. That was most ever in a North South game, too. Larson. That, that's uh, what it was, okay. Larson with a putback ties up the score. Missed his first shot, got a rebound, and put it back up and in. That's what I was thinking it was in the North South game. You're right, Marty. I apologize for that. Hey. It might have been in a tournament game, too. 
Although I think uh, Joel Potter had a 40-point game. I'm not sure if it was more than 40, but uh, good help defense that time by Dominic Mon, and they steal the ball away. Campion driving the lane, puts it up, but he's going to get called for the charge. You know what we needed, Chris? We needed that little line, that little half circle underneath yeah. the basket, because then it wouldn't have been a charge. Pretty easy call, though, I thought, Marty. Uh, I agree with you. He was there for a while. Wholeheartedly, I agree. For once, we agree. Gusky with the good hands, tips it out of bounds. Triggering the inbounds is a Frieder. He gets it in the men's left. Mon with a little tip of the ball, got it over to Campion. Larson going hard to the basket, uh, had it blocked, and then uh, on the line was uh, Fugelstead, and North will keep it. Pretty good defense played by uh, Bayport, Chris. Nate Reichel in his eighth year at uh, Bayport. Lang with a three. Hey, I heard a lot of people say Kevin Lang didn't have a basket the other night. Only took him uh, two minutes to get one tonight and a big three in the lead. A kick out pass. Three point attempt is no good by uh, Sagal. Gusky to the, to the basket, lays it up and in and North is up. Seven to two. Much better start than they had the other night against uh, the Red Wings. Well, it was a 3.08 mark when they got their first point. Outside shot is off, no good. Another rebound by Larson. Sagal missed that uh, three point attempt. Nice pass inside, DeMond, shot was missed. Looked like he got fouled, but no call. Good work around the basket by the Northsiders. Coming in is uh, number 21, Zach Lorbeck. It's hard to believe that Davis Larson is just a freshman. Chris, Lorbeck is the kid that had the 11 points yep. off the bench in that uh, loss. And uh, Lang with another three. He doesn't score any more tonight. He's added a ton already. Tens or threes are wild, Chris. 33 and three. Last eight points. Good hustle defense. It's 10 to two, 425 left in the first quarter. I want to thank uh, Tom Desitel for giving his time prior to the game for that uh, interview. I suppose I should throw out a thank you to you, Chris, for giving of your time for our interview before the game. <laughs> one and out, one and out for Bayport. Gusky off the dribble, couldn't get it to go. Lorbeck with the, uh, with the rebound, and then uh, Gusky going for the steal, runs into the official. Everybody's uh, okay. Evan Melkor. Coming in, number 23. Good help defense by Dominic Mon. Dominic again on the other side of the basket helping out. He's not watching his guy very much. He's going to get a foul, but it's going to be on the floor. Ball's going to go on Campion. That's going to be a second, Chris. That's not good. Oh, forgot about the charge. Stengel's going to come in. And Paris.
Uh, I don't know if you want to go uh, 351 of the first quarter and all of the second without getting Campion back in there. Well, as long as you're ahead, it's okay. Melker being guarded by uh, Gusky. There's an interesting matchup. Clank. Oh, yeah, that was a brick. Good thing it didn't hit the glass straight on. Might have broke it. Larson on a kick out to Priest. He's wide open. Couldn't get it. And then we get an over the back fall on uh, Bayport. Ball's going to go on uh, Tyler Sagel. It's the first team foul on Bayport. North has two team fouls, both of them on Campion. Oh. Larson, not a good decision there to throw it underneath to Paris. So there was nothing he could do with it, even if he'd have caught it. He had to get rid of it right away. That's a good play if LeBron James is getting a return pass. Yeah, or he can jump up and dunk it. <laughs> <laughs> or if you got a taller kid that can go up against the, the tall guys underneath the basket, but when you got a little guard like that, it's... Yeah. Uh, that puts Jared in a tough situation. Uh, good help again, that time by Paris. Three-point attempt is no good. Stengel has uh, Mins left now, Chris. That'll be an interesting matchup. And Larson threw up a prayer and is going to get, going to draw the foul. Let's see who they call it on. Falls on number one, Stephen Minzloff. Gone uh, almost two minutes without a score. Any points? Bayport one of seven. They have no offensive rebounds. Larson hits one of two. It's 11 to two north. Just under three minutes left in the first. And Mon uh, got beat on the uh, dribble and uh, committed the foul. That would be a tough matchup on the open court, Chris. Uh, Dominic guarding uh, Zach Lorbeck. Lorbeck looks to be uh, pretty quick. And they're going to call a blocking foul on Lorbeck. Big 10, that'd be play on. <laughs> I don't know. That was pretty bad. That was a bad screen. It was. And he, Very and he late. leaned into the guy besides. I mean, it was actually a pretty easy call. North uh, running a weave. Lang from the other side. Bango, baby! Oh, oh, Kevin Lang is hot. Three attempts, three buckets. 14 to two. Great start by the Raiders. It's been a 14 point run. Look at a bit of a bust out. And it's gonna be a charge. It looked like the official was a little unsure who he was going to call it on, but Sagel's going to pick up the foul on the drive. You had mentioned in the North-South game that the couple of the South guys weren't uh, standing in there and taking it. Well, uh, Gusky took one there. Showed a lot of courage. So 30-second timeout on uh, Bayport. Well, this is a rematch from a year ago, Marty, but that game was up at Bayport, and... Uh... I remember going up there, and uh, it was just electric that day for the Sheboygan people. It was just, you know, Bayport had the better uh, record that year and pretty good season, and Mr. North and went up there and beat them. Mr. and Mrs. Koyster are in the house with yeah. the little one. Yeah. There you get a good shot of the uh, North High huddle. They've had a great start, unlike uh, Friday night when uh, South ran off, I think it was 16 in a row. And a good start. The one thing that scares you when you're playing a team like uh, Bayport or the Pier, you know, whenever you get down against those teams, it's so hard to come back because they don't go through extreme dry spells. Oh, I thought Playing you... again. Oh, baby. The rim didn't want it. 
I thought you were gonna tell me the thing that scares me is that Bayport has seven, uh, seven coaches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, their first offensive rebound. Oh, good block. Ball is tapped out of bounds by uh, Minzlaff, it looked like, or it could have been uh, Fugelstead. But in either case, North will have it. And Gusky is uh, doing the ball handling chores, Chris. Takes it right to the hoop, but they're gonna call a foul down on the floor. Actually, a good foul by, uh, by uh, Ryan Graybig. Gusky in the lane, scores and he's fouled. Foul's gonna be on uh, Ryan Fugelstead, his first. Six fouls in six minutes for Bayport. They can't make a basket and they can't stop the Raiders. Gusky finishes off the three point play. It's now 17 to two, Gusky has five points. Lang has nine on his three pointer, three three pointers. Boy, oh boy, wide open layup for uh, Fugelstead, and he short armed it. One of nine shooting for Bayport. Scott Mailoff running that bottom camera. Kerry Kautzer in the truck. Richard Bartson up here by us. Clank. Oh, we oh. scored that ourselves. I think Lorfeld's going to get. Lorbeck is going to get credit for the basket. Dusky scores again. 19 to 4. Minzloff has it uh, tipped away, but they're going to call uh, Gusky for a foul. His first, Chris. You know, it's bad when the only way Bayford scores if the white guys put it in for him. <laughs> A triple team, then he forced it up and he's gonna draw the foul. Steven Minzleff on a good move inside. Wow, 10 fouls in seven and a half minutes, Marty. This is, whew. that's a lot of calls. Not, but <laughs> they're pretty legitimate. There's Steven. Yep. Second leading scorer, second in the rebounds in the league. 18 and a half points. He just took over in that second half, uh, Marty, against uh, Manitowoc? No North. I thought. Well, we've got the sheet right here, yeah. Chris. In that uh, first game, he finished with 13 points. He really didn't have all those that right. many points, but uh, it's not necessarily how many you have. In the fourth quarter, he had one, two, three, three different scores. So he did a little bit in that fourth quarter, that's for sure. 108, it's been a long first quarter. Rudolph. Bango! I think they were, what, one of 11 from three-point range in the first half? So they, they got four in the first quarter. Four of seven. Nick Rudolph with a good help on the defense, too. Another clank. Dusky high for the rebound. Oh, and it's stolen away by Lorbeck. Drives down the lane, couldn't get it in. Minzloff. Fighting, lost the ball, and Rudolph comes away with it. North dodges a bullet there. They're up 22 to six with 25 seconds left. Looks like they're gonna play for one. North has been hot, 10 seconds. Doesn't matter where on the court he shoots it from, Marty. Gusky with a pull up eight footer, couldn't get it. And they're gonna get uh, Stangle with an over the back. It'll be the uh, six team foul on North. There's .6 seconds remaining in the first quarter. North up 16, 22 to six. Deep pass. No basket. It was that close. 
All right, after one, North on top, 22 to six. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Back at North High School's Acuity Fieldhouse where uh, the Raiders had an outstanding first quarter. Kevin Lang has uh, nine points. Ethan Gusky has six. Uh, Minsloff, Stephen Minsloff, the big guy for uh, Bayport, averaging uh, 18 points a game, only had four points in the first quarter, Chris. They, uh, we're on him. Pretty good. I had an analogy, but I don't think it would be appropriate for the setting. We have 14% uh, shooting for Bayport in that first quarter, thus being down 16. Dominic doing the smart thing, getting it to a guard. Rudolph. Wow. Bad, nice back cut. He read that play very well. And I like the way it went to the basket, Marty. He went there with authority. We're going to get Dominic on a reach, I believe. And uh, 728, both teams are in a bonus, and we're shooting free throws. Ball's on Davis Larson. It's only his first foul. Stengel's going to come in for uh, Dominic Mann. Minzloff, Stephen Minzloff will be at the line. Shooting the one and one now is the seventh team foul on North. Chris, awfully early to be in the bonus. Minzloff is three for three from uh, the free throw line. North so far tonight is only two for three. Stengel with another board, Chris. Don't forget to jot that down. Gusky forcing oh. it a little bit. Tried to kiss it off the glass, but couldn't get it to go. Minsloff down the lane. Uh, not a good job of playing D that time by uh, Noah. Rudolph open for just a second. Couldn't get it. Big Lang. dog. Larson airballed it. And they're going to get uh, Kevin Lang on the line as he tried to save it. Bayport will have it back. They're down 24 to 7. Well, what's impressive, Marty, is you got five baskets from Lang and Rudolph. I mean, that's. Yeah, you don't expect a lot from those two guys. Yeah, 14 points, four threes, and a bucket. I mean, that's. Uh, that's big. Stengel's going to get called for the foul. You know, if we could get a replay of that, you can see Stengel look at the def at the guy, and then he turns his head and takes a step towards us away from the ball, and all of a sudden the guy's driving, and he doesn't see him the way he needs to, and uh, results in him picking up his uh, second foul. Zach Lorbeck at the line. Steven Minsloff did a good job of pulling back instead of committing the over the back foul. Oh, Larson loses it. Bayport's got half their points on free throws. Yeah, you're right. It's, I was just thinking it's a good thing they're making their free throws. A three point attempt is up and good by Ryan Grayback, the left hander. Well, they had missed their first six. But Dusky scores right away. Mins left on the lane, he scores. That was too easy. 
Rudolph couldn't handle it. Bayport got it back on the push. Kick out. Shot is up and good by Tyler Siegel. This is one of those timeouts that you just take because you have to. Yeah. <laughs> you got to stop the run. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here with 5.46 left in the first half. North on top, 26 to 16, but uh, Bayport has come to life and the parents have too. Well, when you go 2 of 14 in the first quarter, you're bound to make a bu bucket or two. They made three of four here in the quarter, and the two of them threes, and I'll tell you that three point shot or attempt and making baskets like that sure makes the score come back a lot faster. And you can extend it as well. Some Oosberg guys are in the house. I see uh, Josiah Vervelde, some of the guys. He had a Big. heck of a game the other night. Yeah. Let's see if uh, North can uh, right the ship here. Campion still on the bench with his two fouls. Gusky has uh, pretty much taken over the ball handling chores. His three from the top of the circle is off no good. Whoa. Oh. Larson just missed on the steal, but uh, Lorbeck missed the layup attempt, and uh, Stengel got the rebound. His fourth. Going to get Larson with an offensive foul. Two officials blew their whistle, but uh, the one official uh, begged off, let the other make the call. And he had Larson commit the foul, his second, Chris. Three turnovers in three minutes here for North. Well, you got three guys with three fouls Campion. Two three, fouls. Two fouls. Larson and uh, Stengel. Ugh. Three with two fouls. Dominic doing a good hustle. Stengel with the rebound, and he throws it right away. It's like he doesn't want to have anything to do with the dribble. Good defense by North again all year. Two-pointer. Yep, on the line. But Bayport coming alive. It's a seven-point run for them. North with only four points in the quarter. Gusky wide open. Bango. Well, he has that step back because he's quick because you have to defend the quickness and the uh, Bayport defender fell down and he just was wide open and hit a three and that's a big one to break the run, Marty. That's the part of his game that wasn't there uh, his first two years. And rolling it in is the left-hander, Graybeg, his second three of the quarter. Gusky, he knew it. 15 in the half, Marty. 32-21, North, 350. A good help defense that time. Gusky saves it. Gusky again. Bango! He's lighting it up now, Chris. Three threes in a row for him. He's got 18 points, and we still got 324 left in the first half. Timeout, Bayport, it's a full timeout. We'll take a short break. When you're behind the wheel, always watch for people walking and biking. It's Wisconsin law to give bikes at least three feet when passing. In Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. People ride bicycles to go places, get exercise, reduce pollution, save money, and have fun. Watch for people riding bikes when you're driving. Share and be aware, we're all responsible.
Back at North High School's Acuity Fieldhouse. Chris, I was looking at the sheet uh, this afternoon from that game when uh, North beat uh, Bayport. And uh, North had a 12-point run in the first quarter and then an 8-point run in the second. Uh, Bayport had a 9-point run in the second. But uh, my point is that first game was a game of runs for the most part. And that's kind of what we're getting here. Well, Bayport's coming alive, and uh, Ethan Gusky's just sticking it right back to him. North at 52% shooting, and again, letting Ethan Gusky get the ball. And, you know, I was thinking about a little bit that night about what all took place. Got to credit some of his teammates for all those high ball screens, too, to get him open. I mean, you know, I say don't let him get the ball, but he's getting screens from guys up high. Lucas Hayes in the game. Min's left shot is no good. Mon with the rebound. Gusky bringing it up, being guarded by Zach Lorbeck. Hayes, yeah, he got himself into a situation. He's got to get out of it. And with a steal, Lorbeck, and then Minzloff to the lane, to the basket gets fouled. Falls on uh, Hayes. 10th team foul on North. Not a bad foul there by uh, Lucas. They come earn it. That's a 10th team foul. Did you say that, Chris, just now? Yep. Is it going to be double bonus now the rest of the half? 2.43 left. It's got to be deflating for Bayport. We're making a big run, big run, and Ethan just, you know, just derails it. Well, that, again, the halfway down, and it popped back up. Pop back out, as you know, it's like that old saying, right string, wrong yo-yo. Hayes, shot is no good. On the push is Sagal. What are you gonna do? Oh, double, dribble. A double dribble, that's cheating. <laughs> Frieder uh, again got himself that time in a situation that he couldn't get out of, and uh, you know, we've seen North do that a couple of times. And uh, getting called for the foul is uh, Zach Lorbeck. That'll be his second. Gusky will be going to the line. That was a seventh team foul. Two eighteen left in the uh, half. Tom um, Keys called uh, Saturday morning after watching the replay of. Really enjoyed the game. Thought your comments were outstanding, as did I. I mean, they weren't that good, but I mean, they were really good. But one of the things he <laughs> mentioned that he wished we could do is uh, show the clock. And uh, with uh, the equipment that we presently have, you know, it'd be pretty hard to do unless we had a third camera. So Chris and I try to uh, mention that frequently so you guys know where we are in terms of time. Lorbeck, uh, good shot fake, but Mon didn't go for it. Minzloff being guarded by Gusky. Under two minutes left in the first half. Paris has a Sagal, and we get a whistle. Wow. Gusky getting called for that fall, Chris. That's going to be his second. Well, you're up by 20. Now you can take him out with a minute 47. Or, excuse me, up by 15, excuse me. Did I say 20? Yeah. I was thinking he's got 20 points. That's all he's got is 20. <laughs> Gusky has 20. We're not up by 20. Yeah, halfway to his... Uh, this is going to be a long minute and 47 because uh, they don't have what you'd call a normal ball handler that's been out there most of the uh, year. Minsloff makes one out of two. Paris has the height for a guard. But you can't give up your dribble there, Jared. And they almost lose it. Lang is right there. 
Hayes, lean in, has it blocked by Minzloff. Good block by that young man. And push from behind on the pass. Fuglestad will go to the line. Danny Campion coming back in. And I think what they're going to just do, you know, offense, defense. Oh, and they're going to put Ethan in, too, on offense. Maybe try to run some clock. Uh, good point. They need to get out of this first half. They're up by 13. Uh, they had it up. They were. The biggest lead was by 15. No, take that back, 17. Now, we've been doing this a long time, and I coach with coach a long time. He doesn't like putting guys out there with two fouls. But uh, in this case, I think he's... You know, having the ball here, maybe he's going to try to uh, run some clock or an offense-defense thing here. And that's just what they're going to do. 37-25 north on top, rolling down to about a minute left. They're going to screen down and Lang will pop up. They're going to screen down and can't, uh, Kuski will get open. You know, if Bayport was smart, they'd kind of assume what's going to happen here, but they're not that smart. Well, I mean, you're not going to score, so get up in the passing lanes. That's a better job there by uh, Frieder. Gusky has or Graybeck, it. Graybeck, excuse me. Yeah, they want to double team him now. 30, rolling down to the 32nd mark. And Campion gets fouled. There you go. Now get Ethan out of the game, coach. Kugelstad picks up his second foul. Paris in for Gusky. Good call, coach. Stangle for shooter. Good idea. That a boy. Good job, coach. That was only the eighth foul on uh, Bayport. Campion will have to make the first one to get the second. Drains it. Stengel at the table waiting to come in for Campion. This is an important free throw, not just for the point business, but also because of the foul situation. Thirty-nine twenty-five. I think at halftime they're going to bring out uh, Aaron Rothwell. The uh, state champion at 182. Yeah, that's a good honor for him. Well, I was a heck of the, a season, undefeated. I, I was getting the updates all the time on Saturday night. He was on the line. Zach Lorbeck caught the ball on the line. North will get it back. Campion and Gusky back in the ball game. Looking to run some clock. Paris and uh, Mon out. Lang, Rudolph, Gusky, Stengel, and Campion. Clock rolling. Good. 10 seconds. Good screen by Lang to get Gusky the ball. Into Stengel on a nice pass by Campion, and that's going to be the half. North did what they wanted to do. Good coaching maneuver by Coach Desatel, and we're at halftime. North up 41 25. They fought for social change, they fought against tyrants, they fought for human rights. Yet behind these achievements, are individuals who waged a more personal war. They fought the struggle against mental illness. And they won. In an instant, everything we know can be taken away. I'm John LaRoquette, and as an actor, I've made a career on TV and performing on the Broadway stage. But is that what matters most? If I was suddenly disabled and couldn't take steps, couldn't I still act? Only abilities matter. 
Visit Kessler Foundation on Facebook and tell us your abilities. And go to KesslerFoundation.org, where only abilities matter. You're looking at the number one cause of lung cancer. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. Now you're looking at the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. Whether you smoke or not, radon can cause lung cancer. Protect your family. Have your home tested. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Radon problems can be fixed. Dad, wait till you see the bike we got for Jake. Hearing loss happens gradually with age, making it easy to ignore. Yet most older Americans aren't getting their hearing tested. Untreated hearing loss can keep your loved ones from enjoying what they cherish most. Dad, can you hear me? Don't let that happen. Speak up about hearing loss. You'll be glad you did. Whether it's on the way to school, at school, or online, bullying has become a non-stop threat to our youth today. Is your child being bullied? The National Runaway Switchboard can help. If you're having a hard time, get online or call to chat now. perfect to be a perfect parent because kids in foster care don't need perfection they need you there you see Aaron Rothwell the division one 182 pound champion at the WIA state tournament finished with a record of 47 and 0 yeah he uh, he's unbelievable last year it's kind of weird he lost uh, to a, a gentleman who he ended up wrestling in the semifinals. The guy that would beat him last year was actually seated number one all year. 
and then Aaron was number two, and then the state brackets come out, and these two kids are in the same semifinals. Why did like, they do that? <laughs> I'm like, what? The other kid was undefeated too. He's from uh, Mount Horeb, uh, and Aaron had to wrestle uh, in the semifinals, and the semifinals was actually a better match. He actually won in overtime uh, to uh, win it there. He took a chance and uh, got a takedown in overtime to win, uh, just three to one. And then in the finals, and I was getting texts from uh, Coach Bubholtz uh, all night to keep me up to date on things. It was real close. It was one to one, and uh, then it was three to one, three to two, and finally he ended up winning uh, five to two. But uh, Rocky's worked hard. He's He's always wanted, this is something he does, he travels all over the country. He's actually a national, like a Roman Greco wrestler as well. He's, he does extremely well, so congratulations. So tell to him. me why the Olympics is going to take out wrestling out of their Un program. Unbelievable. What the world is I know, it's one of the original sports uh, to ever start in the Olympics. And uh, uh, Rocky's going to be going on to the University of Pittsburgh uh, and wrestle for the Panthers. And Pittsburgh's ranked like 14th or 15th in the country, so. That ain't no shabby place he's going to go. and uh, like to keep a kid like that around here, though. Yeah, it would be. And, uh, you know, like I said, he, he uh, this is something he wanted and uh, works very hard. And uh, it was his goal to be a wrestling state champ. And congratulations to him, too. And he played a little baseball one time and could hit hit the snot out of the ball if he needed to, believe he, it or not. You know, when he hit it, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you were trying to say? No, well, he could hit. There's no question, but uh, wrestling definitely was his passion, and uh, his parents are, are real proud of him, as well as his classmates, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, I was, I was going to say, uh, in uh, tournament action, you know, the way this is going to work out, we briefly mentioned it uh, in the pregame, but... Uh, we got Bayport North now, and that the winner of that of our game here is going to play the winner of De Pere and Green Bay Southwest. That game will be at Ashwaubenon on Thursday at seven o'clock. The winner of that Ashwaubenon game will play the winner from the bottom bracket, which uh, in all likelihood is going to be Germantown. I mean, Ooh. they were just uh, <laughs> outstanding. But that game, that Saturday game on uh, March second, is going to be at Homestead at uh, 1 p.m. The winner of that game will then move on to state. And uh, much to uh, Chris's chagrin, there's only going to be five classifications. Chris, you haven't moved to six yet. <laughs> I know you're upset about that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm just kidding. Chris doesn't like that they have so many divisions. Well, I guess it's just too many champions. But you know what? I'll tell you what. Keep the five divisions. But bring back the uh, four extra Division One teams, and I'll, then I'll be, because uh, you should have eight teams there, because that's the big school. Uh, then we'd have to start on Wednesday. Well, that's true. That's true, but uh, they, they used to have uh, four, but you're right. That's true, but... Hey, let's go through some uh, first-half scoring. Uh, first for uh, Bayport, their leading scorer, Steven Minsloff, uh, had 11 first-half points to lead uh, the Pirates. Ryan Fugelstead had two. Tyler Sagel had three, as did Zach Lorbeck. And Ryan Graybeck had uh, six points. He had a couple of threes in that uh, second quarter when they started to go on a run. For North, they were led by their uh, outstanding guard, Ethan Gusky. He had 20 points. Danny Campion spent a lot of time on the bench with two early fouls, had two. Nick Rudolph had a nice... Off the bench, roll tonight, handling the ball a little bit, playing some defense and scored five. Davis Larson only had three, but uh, was a force on the defensive end and did a good job rebounding. Chris will talk about that. Kevin Lang, surprisingly, with uh, nine early points. And Noah Stengel uh, finished the half with a quick basket, and there you can see the clock running down. Chris, you have some uh, rebound and uh, other stats. Yeah, Ethan Gusky, uh, seven of 12. 7 of 12 shooting in there, and he really, uh, when Bayport was making a run, he hit those three threes, but I think, Marty, you mentioned it before, uh, big dog Kevin Lang with three threes, and uh, Rudolph with that other three in the first quarter. That was big to get off to a good start, and then Ethan Gusky with his threes in the second. I mean, they're 6 of 13 shooting. The other day, they were, they were 1 of, like, 11 in the first half. Or Bayport, they were 7 of 22 shooting, which is 32 percent now they also committed eight turnovers and uh, I just think it was you know Ethan Gusky hitting those shots and then the last minute of the ball game when we hit those buckets there at the end that was big as yeah, well. Situational uh, substitutions was huge 
Uh, by the way, when we uh, did the game the other night, the South game, Gusky did not have uh, ankle issues. He had uh, cramping issues. Correct. I found that out from Chris Lenz after the game. Yeah. yeah well, they were just drained. Those kids were drained. That's such an advantage that we get the day off. There's Artie Klein here, him and Barbie here. I spent the weekend with them. The left-hander off no good. North comes away with the rebound. Ryan Graybeck uh, with that shot attempt. Gusky off the glass, no good. Bayport comes away with the rebound. That was uh, Sagal. And we're going to get a pushing foul right off the bat. Another early foul. That one's going to go on Dominic Mon, his second. I thought uh, North did a pretty nice job on Minsloff. He, only, he was three for six, Marty. Yeah, they held him down for the most part. He got uh, five of his points on uh, free throws. And I thought a lot of the stuff was, you know, they always did a good job of double teaming or, you know, like right there. I mean, he every time he got the ball, it was difficult for him to get a good shot off. Mon with a little tip away, but uh, Bayport keeps it. You like that, live hands. Minsloff down the lane. Got the shooter's roll there. Both teams had 19 points in that uh, second quarter, Chris. Uh, the difference, of course, was in the first when North scored 22, Bayport only six. So 14 point advantage for the Raiders. Being very patient this uh, possession. And why not, 14 point lead. And Minsloff is gonna pick up the silly foul. Only his second. And you get a foul out of the deal as well. Yep. Both teams now with uh, one team foul this uh, half. Whoa. <laughs> Graybeck. Oh, Larson with a strong rebound. Let's see who gets. He's going to pick up the foul. That's a tough break. They both went up together for it. And uh, Larson got the advantage. I mean, he knocked the other guy down, but I don't know that it was a foul. It was a foul on the other guy, too, then. But uh, Larson now with uh, three fouls. That's a tough call. And Lang with a steal, and then another foul. Tyler Sagal with his third. Just, uh, like I said, just not... Uh Big fans of Bayport this year. They're just. I don't know. Do you got permission to stay out till after ten? Because that's about when we'll get home tonight. I don't know. I don't know. We'll be home before then. Campion on a bus out, kicks it out to Lang. Oh, good luck. Round and out. Larson with the rebound puts it up and in. Good Kevin job by Davis. He has five points. I was going to say good. Good shot there by Lang. I thought that one was down. Well, Campion did the right thing, too, by penetrating. And as soon as he saw the help come over, he dished it out to Kevin. I'm going to explain something to you in a little bit, too, Coach, okay. about uh, why I want uh, eight teams at the state tournament, by the way. Sagal with a basket. We'll do that uh, when we get a timeout. How's that? Okay. Campion open and got it in. A three pointer for Denny. 46 29. Largest lead was 17. They've got it again here in the second half. And there's a push off not called. How can you not call that? It's right in front of the official. You can't Danny. stop us. Oh, Danny. Had the layup but couldn't get it in. That should have been an easy one, Danny. Grobig. Lost it, trying to do the spin dribble. North has it back with a 17-point lead. 
Rolling down to a 4.30 left in third. <laughs> Gus Keith's beat. He's getting pushed around. Kick out to Larson. Three point attempt is no good. And a bust out for the Pirates. North doing a good job of getting back on defense, however. Clank. And they're going to get Minzloff over the back of Stengel again. Good job by Noah to get the inside position. For uh, Steven Minzloff, that's his third. You can't get him out of the game. Because Melkor's uh, coming in. Melcher, pardon me, Sagal sitting out. You can't take Minzloff out. You're down by 17. You got to hope that he can get started on offense. Terrible defense. Larson and we can't uh, score underlay. Again. Oh, coach. Had a pretty good look, but uh, couldn't get it in. He missed one, and Campion missed one. Three guys over yeah. there, yeah, but uh, oh. Minsloff still puts it up and in. I liked our chances there. Great defense, North. 3.30 left in the quarter. Dusky, leaping shot from the lane is no good. Minsloff with the rebound. North pressuring. They're going to have to hustle back on D now. Bayport has numbers. And there's a travel not called. Oh, cheapers. Cheating. And a good back cut by uh, Lorbeck for two. Three guys missed that uh, six steps. 46-33. Three minutes left. Campion, runner in the lane, couldn't get it. And then Stengel with a tip gets fouled. Foul's going to go on number two, Ryan Fugelstead, and that'll be his third. See what you're getting here is drive penetration past the guards. And then when they put up a shot, the Bayport guys have to step out to stop, stop drive penetration and there's nobody under the basket. And that's why we're getting a lot of second chances and opportunities. Larson had one before, now Stengel gets one here. Because their guards can't stop Campion and they can't stop Gusky. North was six for seven in the first half on their free throws in a line drive <laughs> by Stengel, he gets it in. 47-33 North, Stengel has three now. Won't reach. Good help defense by Larson, but Melker steps through. And what are we gonna have here? Ball's gonna be on Noah Stengel. He's got three, Chris. Melker definitely causes some matchup problems. Shot from the corner is no good. And Campion finally comes away with the loose ball, but uh, Bayport was pretty persistent getting the ball back two different times. Larson with a leaner, he scores and he's fouled. Can't stop us. He's out of control. That was an easy call. Fans aren't happy, the coach, Regal's not happy, but I thought that was a good call. He got bumped, bumped, bumped and put it in. Tucker No picks up his first foul and uh, finishing off the three point play was Davis Larson. He now has eight and it's 50 to 33. North uh, equals their largest lead again. Inside feed to Melker. And we're gonna get Larson with another foul. That'll be his fourth. North by 17, two minutes left in the third. 
Gusky and uh, Stengel in. Larson and uh, Mon out. That fourth foul on uh, Noah hurts. It's a good thing we've got a big lead. Melker shot is no good. Stengel with a rebound. He's got a six. I was going to say, he's got a few. Campion backs it out. Under two minutes left in the quarter. Gusky had a shot blocked. Ethan all four in the third here, Marty. And uh, right away, they're going to get uh, Paris, I believe. No, nope. uh, him or Stengel. Yeah, good job of uh, <laughs> better on Jared. He, it's, his, it's only his second foul. Stengel's got three already, and we've got uh, Larson on the bench with four. Five each. A lot of fouls in this ball game. Lots of fouls. And... Uh, Net was a little tangled up, and Dominic uh, jumped up. Heck, I could have done that. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> Aubrey Koyster would have to give you a boost. <laughs> Where's the chair? You know, Stengel's got three. You got to attack him. If you're Minsloff, I mean. Outside shot is off. No good. North with another rebound. Stengel with number seven. Frieder missed that shot. Doesn't matter who shoots it up for them there. Rudolph left oh. open. Oh, around and out. On the break. Gusky back. Intercepts. North trying to run, but the, they don't have numbers, so Gusky pulls it back out. We're under a minute. 50 seconds left in the third. Ethan telling uh, Campion to get out of my way. I'll take care of business. Danny has it being guarded closely by Sagel. Gussie by Graybig. 30 seconds. Campion again. North content. We don't, haven't seen this much from the Raiders over the years, but this is a smart move given the situation. 15 seconds. Gusky with a long three. Bango! Take that, Mr. Wright. Now he's got a hoop. Yep, 7.53 into the quarter. He hits his big three. Shot is no good, and we're at the end of three. North by 20, 53-33. This could be a book. This could be beautiful. This cannot be trash. This can all be recycled. Learn more at thiscouldbe.org. High School's Acuity Fieldhouse, where a uh, late three by uh, Ethan Gusky has given North a 20-point lead, their largest of the night. And he has 23 points. Well, just like at the end of the first quarter, or excuse me, the second quarter, where Ethan got all the baskets for North, he got the big three at the end of the half. North shooting just 43% from the floor, but uh, they do have nine more shot attempts than Bayport and... Uh, Bayport's only shooting 33%. Ryan Fugelstead just picked up his fourth foul, fighting through a screen. 
Minsloff has three fouls. He's on the floor. And uh, Tyler Sagel, number four, also has three fouls. Norris Davis Larson is on the bench right now with four fouls. Stengel with three. Good hustle by uh, Gusky to come to the ball, eh, Chris? Otherwise that gets stolen. Lang calling out play number two. Next foul against Bayport is bonus, Marty. And there it is. Picking up that foul is Ryan Frieder, number three. Believe it or not, that's his first foul. <laughs> Danny's been pretty uh, outstanding at the line, Chris. He's got six points. Zach Lohr back in. North with eight threes today, Marty. Yeah, they've eight, been lighting it up. Eight of 17. Kevin and, Lane got him started off just fine. Yep, and then Ethan Gusky get his three, and then Ethan Gusky got another one, and Campion got one. Oh, that's wrong. I think they got more than that. Well, good pump fake by Minzloff. He shoots over uh, Lang and scores. They got nine threes. Whatever, eight or nine, they've been firing them in, that's for sure. Yep. Nine it is. Trying to double the ball, but uh, North pretty good at handling the, the rock, and uh, it's going to be tough. Stengel inside off a nice pass. Scores. He's got two baskets on two layups like that. But he does have seven big rebounds, Noah. There's a three-pointer by Ryan Gribig. That cuts the lead to 19. Thank you very much. 57-38. Gribig with uh, nine points, all of them on threes. And he immediately picks up a foul. Yeah, he's three of seven shooting threes. Three of eight in the game overall. Good defense by North, Marty. Very good. Gusky was three for three before that miss, and I didn't say it, especially because he was three for three. I didn't want to put the uh, kiss of death on him. Didn't work. Minzloff trying to do the skip pass, but uh, Campion had it red. And intercepts. 13 turnovers for the Pirates as well. Oh, Cheating. Rudolph. Now he had the dribble, Chris. It was okay. Uh, you don't think it was a hesitation? Yeah, Big he hesitation. <laughs> oh, Kevin, keep that pivot foot down. Nice bounce pass. Stengel had a shot blocked by Minsloff. North will keep it. 5.28 left in the ball game. I'll tell you, these uh, last eight minutes are just crawling by. Isn't it just like that when you have the lead and you want it to go fast? Yeah, and, you know, Bayport's just going to have to be incredible. Good job by Graybig to fight through the double screen. Rudolph kicks it out to Campion. Campion uh, content to uh, bring it back out. North playing keep away with the Rock. We don't see this much. Well, the thing is they play keep away and then they get a layup to Stingle. <laughs> That's just. And they're not even looking to get it to uh, Ethan. Kevin Lang, no good. Stingle had a shot at the rebound but didn't get it. But Danny Campion comes away with it. Minsloff almost with a steal. And now we get a tie up.
And Bayport's got it. First turnover on North in the half. That's pretty good. 447 left in the fourth. North up by 19. Bayport uh, trying to do the double team on uh, when North has the ball. It's uh, got to be wearing them out, Chris. Yep. Well, pack the uh, vans up with as many people as you can and head up to Ashwaubenon on Thursday night. Oh, nice shot. Minsloff again under pressure. Put it up and in. Be the second year in a row that North will be playing De Pere. Hope, well, probably De Pere, but Southwest could win that one. Who knows? Yep. That's why they play the game, but... Uh, Oh, Danny throws it away. Probably not a good decision to go on the baseline. And the referee goes down. I think he tripped over one of the kids on the sideline. See if you can get a replay of that. The kids were running around on the sideline and got right in the way of the official, and he went down, and so did the kid. And uh, they are heading off <laughs> up into the stands where they belonged in the first place. Come on, people. Referee uh, seems to be okay. Larson coming in. I'm glad we're up here, Chris. We kind of stay out of trouble. <laughs> Just a 16 foul on North, so Bayport will get it out of bounds. Noah Stengel picks up his fourth. That was uh, only the sixth team foul on uh, North. Minsloff being double teamed by Gusky and uh, Mon, but he still gets it. He oh can't boy. call that foul. Come on, he's just standing there. Jeez. Ugelstad, so it was off the ball, actually, Chris, it looks like, but still. It's been a 7-2 run so far, Chris, by uh, Bayport to uh, crawl back to within 16. Campion with a good pass in the Mon. It rolls out. I thought that one was down too. So did I. Hoop didn't want it again. It's been that kind of night. Gusky with the rebound. Comes away with it and then has it tipped away. Bayport's got it back. Shot from outside the line is no good. Larson with the rebound. It's ninth. Three, I was going to say 325 left in the fourth quarter. And nobody coming to the ball all of a sudden. Chris are kind of standing around. I don't know if I like this. Well, I liked when they had a guy in the middle and they were screening. Oh, he's wide open, Dom. This he won't miss. Dominic Mon gets his first points of the night. Way to go, Dominic. That's so calling the press off under three minutes, Marty. Probably a good move. 59-41, north up 18. Minsloff with a leaner. Oh, come. You can't call that. <laughs> I mean, he just jumped right into the guy. Balls on Dominic Mon. Minsloff will be shooting a pair. Oh. This is uh, only the uh, fourth free throw of the half for uh, Bayport. They've made one out of three so far. Oh. 
Wins off with 20 though. Gusky high for the ball. And a good job of pulling it back out. North again playing keep away. Larson wants it. He's open. Dominic Mon staying underneath the basket. Just in case. And committing the foul was uh, Ryan Fugelstead. That'll be five for him. Well, last year, uh, Bayport had hosted this same game. And uh, North went up there and beat them. And for the second consecutive time, barring a miracle, uh, North is going to get it. Thank you, Mr. Horse. I've been remembering, Chris, to bring my sheet with the replay times on it for uh, Bill to read. And Lang scores his first points since early in the first quarter when he nailed three threes. He now has 10 points on the night. He's uh, had a nice game all the way around. Sixty-one forty-two, North by 19. Mil <laughs> Almost lost by North, but... Uh, Minsloff had a wide open layup. I'll tell you, Gusky's got great ups, Chris. He can jump. And Larson gets fouled. That foul was committed by uh, Tyler Sagel. That'll be his fourth. Larson will be on the line shooting two now, north in the super bonus. Larson has eight points. Big Johnson Ellis leaving the house. Oh, 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 what a roll. Touched just about every inch of the rim before it finally dropped through. That was a case, right string, right yo-yo. I saw Ty Gutschow here too, his dad passed away. His yeah, that's so. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, Big I supporter of bas uh, youth you know, sports. Yep. Big time, big time with the A's too. Gives oh. a, they give a lot to uh, that program. Sorry to hear about that for Tyson and his family. Bobby, not that old either. He was a heck of a ball player. Probably made his name more in uh, softball than baseball. Dominic Mon with a nice tip over to Davis Larson, so North can get possession of the ball. Davis 120 with a, left in the game, Chris. I was going to say Davis with another double-double. All right, tell me about the uh, tournament and the eight teams. We're oh, I was just going to say, uh, you know, you're thinking like maybe De Pere might be the second best team in the state. You know, and they never get a chance. You know, they're going to have to run through for the second consecutive year and possibly, you know, go against uh, Germantown. You know, wouldn't it be nice to rotate the sectionals every once in a while so you can maybe play... You know, you don't have to go through Germantown two years in a row to get to the finals. Maybe, you know, like they do when they had eight teams. You know, it's kind of how it works. So that's just another thought. And they're bigger schools. I just think, you know, these are, I understand that the small schools have a difficult thing, but the big schools have all the students in it. I mean, they, they and sometimes the better, you know, so in athletes. In other words, to get a representation of the student body at large, you need more of the big schools correct. in the tournament. Correct. Rudolph Paris and uh, Belmore, Eli Belmore in the game. Also in is uh, Austin Scheib. And uh, Dominic Butson. I think the defense did it, Marty, tonight. I really did. You just came out and when they shot two of 14 in that first quarter, all oh, six from three, you turn, caused them to have five turnovers. It was the defense that set the tone for North tonight uh, and carried them the rest of the way. There's Eli Belmore. Eli was waiting at the table for uh, 
Campion to get his uh, free throws. Oop, there's a double dribble not called, but we'll let that one go. Mason Geisler in. The pass inside is tipped out of bounds away from Zach Yonke. Also in the game, uh, Tucker No, he was in a little bit earlier. Jacob Rathke in. And getting set to check in for Nord. Michael Baca comes in for Paris. Baca, 6'3", junior. And also in is uh, Alex Vandermoss. Oh, come for, uh, on. Aye. Mason Geisler is officially in the game now. He gets in with a foul. Under a minute left. Baca. Backing it out is uh, Butson. Butson had a shot blocked. And the ball is tipped out of bounds. North is going to keep it. We're going to get it back, I should say. It looked like uh, Michael Baca might have tipped it out, but the referee didn't see it that way. North has it with 30 seconds left. Chris has gone downstairs to get some interviews. Inside to Scheib, his shot is off the rim, no good. Rudolph kicks it out, 10 seconds left. And that's gonna be it, Belmore. Pulls it back out, and that's the ball game. North wins it, 65 to 42. Ethan Gusky and Dan Campion receiving the uh, regional final trophy for North. They will advance to sectionals on Thursday at Ashwabanon, where they'll play the winner of De Pere and Green Bay Southwest. Against the winner of the Southwest De Pere game. Thursday night, 7 o'clock in Ashwabanon. Bill Horsch making that announcement. It's not over. Japan still needs our help. This is not yesterday's news. It's happening now. This is Japan now. Let's help. Some risks are obviously not worth taking. Watch where you're going! Some aren't as obvious, but could be just as deadly. 
like the risk for type 2 diabetes, especially if you're over 45 or overweight. Take the diabetes risk test. It's free and takes less than a minute. Type 2 diabetes is one risk you can't afford to take. So stop diabetes before it stops you. We're back here with Dom and Davis. As opposed to on Friday night where you guys started off really, really cold, good start tonight, probably what you just wanted and probably what Coach wanted. Yeah, we didn't want to get up. Sorry, we got. Yeah, and I think you did that right away. You hit, you know, Kevin Lang got, you know, three threes there, and Nick Rudolph got a three. You know, different people stepping up, you know, the other night. Where was Kevin? He hit three threes to start the game, and like I said, Nick hit it. So it's nice to get other people to contribute. To. Yeah. We open for an easy shot. And let's talk about. I thought tonight it was all about defense. You guys dictated from the get go. I mean, they were two of fourteen shooting right away, and you caused five turnovers. And you know, they didn't even get close to shooting. You know, anywhere near the rest of the game either. But I thought your defense tonight was outstanding. Another thing you guys do too, and I'm sure Coach Worth drives us in you guys, but you guys have great help defense too, which you know, stat sheets and things and shooting percentage. But if you watch you guys, you get a lot of guys helping. Thought you did too, Davis. Uh, Dominic, your seniors don't want this, this season to end. Another another step closer, you know, maybe to the state tournament. Yeah, we got another we got another game. We can keep playing, just keep fighting and. See how it goes. I thought you, again, I mentioned before, you had a lot of contributions from a lot of people. Stengel today had seven rebounds in there. And like I said, we had Nick Rudolph got that shot. And then in the first, you know, couple minutes, Danny gets into foul trouble. So Paris has to step up. Lucas, really, again, a team effort. Yeah, we, had a, we did a great job crashing the boards. Uh, that Steven Minzoff, he's, he's very good at crashing or uh, drawing fouls. So we had to help, have our bench help us out there. Well, and I think it's that you always have good game plans, and Coach obviously gets you guys prepared for teams, and there's no doubt you guys did that again tonight. He had you guys all ready to go. Yeah, he's, he's the best at getting our game plans together. We sit there and scout for a half an hour to an hour before every game. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it kind of pays off here. It's nice to finish off the season with a big victory, and it's always nice to beat Bayport, but, boy, you had the crowd in it right from the get-go tonight. It, these are exciting games here and playing at home. It's good to have all the fans here and the students all riled up. Well, I told them, I said, everybody better get on the, get pack their vans and come up to Ashwaubenon and see you guys play. Hopefully there's a fan bus or a couple of them. Get a big crowd for uh, probably De Pere or uh, Southwest. Yeah. Well, congratulations, both of you guys. Uh, with Dominic and Davis here, with the big victory, we're going off to Ashwaubenon. With that, we'll send it back to Marty. North, the winner, 65-42. to 42. Uh, Second half scoring or lack of second half scoring by uh, Bayport uh, was uh, very apparent and cost them the game. They only had 17 second half points. Uh, scoring for tonight, uh, Bayport was led by their uh, high scoring forward, Steven Minzloff. He had 20 points. Ryan Graybeg had uh, eight. For North, they uh, got good contributions from many different players on the scoring side. Dan Campion had nine, Davis Larson, 10. Kevin Lang, 11, Noah Stengel, 5, as did Nick Rudolph, those two gentlemen off the bench. Dominic Mann had 2, but uh, leading all scorers tonight was Ethan Gusky with uh, 23 points. He uh, really fired him in tonight. Uh, North will now play the winner of uh, Deep Pier and Green Bay Southwest on Thursday at 7 o'clock up in Ashwaubenon. Uh, also want to remind you, about uh, WSCSSheboygan.com where we have a lot of programming. You'll want to check that out. With the win tonight, WSCS runs their record to 15-3. Uh, and three. And for the crew, Brian, uh, pardon me, we have uh, 
Richard Bartson on camera, Scott Mayloff on camera, Kerry Kautzer in the truck. For my partner Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching everybody and hopefully we'll see you one more time at least down the tournament road.